in, in the United States, I very frequently go to mosques and meet with the Muslims in the mosque. I go with a group of Christian friends, and we spend an evening discussing faith together uh, and learning to know each other. Uh, these are very wonderful experiences for us. I know that not in that in all countries that might not be possible, but in the United States it most certainly is possible. And the Muslims always welcome us very energetically, grateful for that. On one occasion, uh, our Muslim imam friend uh, was spending the evening describing the five pillars of duty and the five pillars of belief within Islam. And when he concluded his basically two-hour discussion sharing with us, he said, I want you to remember this and never forget it. Um, within Islam, there is nothing surprising because Islam is the religion of the natural man. Islam is fully rational, fully philosophical. Uh, if you would just think logically, you would become a Muslim. You don't even need revelation to be convinced of the truth of Islam. Which, of course, he was very accurately, I believe, as I would understand what I hear my Muslim friends say, he was very accurately describing uh, the nature of Islam as Muslims understand it. So I then said, may I respond? And he said, yes. I said, I will not comment on Islam. That is your responsibility to share with us the meaning of Islam. But I want to share with you the gospel tonight briefly. And I said, the gospel is so surprising that no philosophy or religion has ever imagined the gospel. In fact, it is so astonishing, we can only believe the gospel through revelation from the Holy Spirit. I said, let me just describe the gospel and you will understand what I am saying. We believe, as do Muslims, here we agree completely, that God created the heavens and the earth, that the 50 billion galaxies in space, each one of which is comprised of some 30 billion stars, each of these amazing galaxies out there in space. When I went to college, we were told that there's 3,000 galaxies. Now they're saying at least 50 billion of them spaced at 400 million light years apart. It is totally astounding. God created all of that and sustains it. That is amazing. And truly, both Muslims and Christians agree about that. God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. But now, the great surprise, God who put all of that together loves us so greatly that he has come to earth in the form of a baby born in a manger in Bethlehem. And that child became a refugee in Egypt. This is God, the creator of the universe, in Jesus, the Messiah, who suffers as a refugee in Egypt. And then he works for some years as a carpenter in Nazareth, building houses and making furniture. A carpenter in Nazareth. This is the creator of the universe serving and working as we all do. And when he began his preaching ministry, he often did not have a house to sleep in. And a pillow became, a stone became his pillow. And as his ministry came to a conclusion, he is arrested and spit upon and beaten and mocked. And he's put on a cross between two thieves, those outstretched arms on that cross. Is, the, is God with us? He is the one through whom all creation is brought to pass and is sustained. And all the hatred and the rebellion of the whole universe and of all humanity goes crashing upon him on that cross. And what does he do? He cries out 
in forgiveness. Outstretched arms are for inviting. Outstretched arms are for forgiving. If I come to you like this, it means I want to forgive you. I want to be reconciled to you. I want, I want us to be welcoming to one another. I want you to become my friend. Outstretched arms. And that's the outstretched arms of God on that cross as Jesus is crucified. And in his resurrection, he commissions us who believe in him to go forth and to share his love to all nations. He entrusts to us that awesome responsibility. Truly, this is the gospel. And it is so astonishing that no philosophy or religion has ever in its wildest imagination, imagine the gospel. But it's God's gift to us. This Jesus who loves this way is God's gift to us. We're invited to accept his forgiveness and his embrace. That's the good news of the gospel. And it is through the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, that our hearts are opened to receive and to believe this astonishing good news. So in five minutes, that's what I shared in the mosque that night. The astonishing good news of the gospel. So amazing. I like philosophy. I study philosophy. I teach philosophy in university. For some years I've taught philosophy. Enjoy it very much. But I have never met any philosopher who has imagined that God could love that much. Never. We learn this through revelation through the gift of the Holy Spirit. So when I went to Bumangi with my grandchildren last couple summers ago, and the church that my parents had helped to plant was filled with 750 people, I believe it was, children, choirs, young people, old people singing. And in the middle of that church service, this old, old woman, who was one of the first believers among the Zanaki, She's bent over with arthritis and she came into the center of the room holding up a tattered old book, a small book, a little gray book. And she held this up as she started to dance. This book tells all about it. This book tells all about it. Everyone believe what this book says. The book she was holding up was the Gospel of Matthew that my dad had translated into the Zanaki language back there 70 years ago. And she's holding this book up, you know. <laughs> this tells all about it. For Jesus in Matthew is Emmanuel, God with us, that God loves so greatly, he has come and lived among us and redeems us. She was holding up this book, singing with so much joy, this old, old woman. She never studied philosophy, but she knew the wonder of it all. How did she know that? Through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, you see? So that's what I tried to share in the mosque. And the Imam said, it is impossible for God to love that much. It cannot be. And I, I, I begged him, I plead with you, do not put God in a box. Let God love you as greatly as he does love you. Don't say, no, that's impossible. Let God surprise you with his abundant love. And as we think of Jesus walking across the page of the religions of the world, Whatever that religion might be, that's the prayer. That's what Jesus longs will happen. That people will open their hearts through the work of the Holy Spirit to the surprise of it all, that God loves us as greatly as that man <laughs> on the cross who cries out, Father, forgive them. That's God with us, crying out in forgiveness inviting our embrace, our reconciliation to God and to one another. And that's the gospel, which is a total surprise. And so that's what we'll be looking at in this class. 
what are the surprises of the gospel when Hinduism meets Jesus, you see? Uh, when Buddhism meets Jesus? When an atheist in, 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 in Lithuania meets Jesus? They're in that theology class or whatever. That they hear the narrative of Jesus and say, wow, that's really good news. That's really good news. That's what, we're, what we'll be exploring in this class, okay? Yeah. Let God surprise you. Let God surprise me. Yeah, with God's abundant love for us. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.